Hey guys, happy Monday. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to do another painting. Go figure. So I'm going to be doing a painting on a 24 by 30 canvas, and this is a gallery wrapped canvas level three from Michaels. And I'm going to be doing a puddle pour and swirl, a little bit different from the last couple of paintings I've done. Those were literally dump and swirls where I'm dumping the paints on top of each other. So this is a more controlled process where I put one paint color down and then gently add the other ones. And then I put my dump paint and we swirl it around. Now with this type of um, painting, we're gonna have to thin the paints really nicely and they have to be almost water thin. You don't want it off your stir stick to sink and you don't really want it to mound. So you have to kind of play with it a little bit. I just wanna remind people that the formula that I use is a guideline. So it's basically one part paint, two parts Floetrol, a drizzle of Liquitex pouring medium um, and a little bit of water or in sometimes a lot of water, depending on how fluid your paints are. And I just mix that up. And if it's too thick, I add more water. If it's too thin, I add either more paint or more, flo more Floetrol to thicken it up. So let me show you the paints we're gonna be using today. I have not used this brand before, uh, or this type of paint, but I've used the brand, it's Folk Art. I'm gonna be using Rose Gold. This is from their Treasure Gold collection. Um, I also have Fire Opal. I have Aquamarine. And last but not least, I have DecoArt Metallics, Dazzling Metallics Champagne. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the ultramarine down as my first puddle, um, stretch it slightly so I have some of the blue around the upper edges of my canvas. And then I'll layer it darker down to lighter after that. So we'll see what we can get from that. Um, so we'll get started here in a couple of minutes. I've gotta mix my paints and prep my canvas. But I wanted to let you know one thing to keep in mind. Um, my studio space here is in a spare bedroom um, in my new home. Um, my last studio was in my basement and I had my own space. What was great about my basement space was is that I had a space heater that I used, like a radiating space heater. And that thing ran probably all the time at a constant temperature of 65 degrees in the winter as well as in the summer. The problem that I have here is that I can't regulate the temperature that well because um, with this room being shut off, it can get really hot if the heat's on or really cold um, if the air conditioning's on. So my last painting called Spring, um, it didn't do well as it dried. It was almost dry and the negative space and some of the color around it curdled, if that's the right word to use. It had all these bumps and ridges that were like very noticeable. And it was because I think I had a day or two where it was really cold here and this room is shut off from the rest of the upstairs here. And so it, we don't run the heat that much during the day and not at night. We like to sleep when it's cold. And so the room is really, really cold and the temperatures weren't regulated. So I think what ended up happening was is that my paints, like I said, they curdled and the painting was ruined. I let it see how it dried and it was just, the ridges were so big, it's, it's not even repairable. The good thing is, is that, you know, I painted over that canvas three or four times so I felt like I got a good use out of it and some good practice. So hopefully I've learned my lesson. I do have a space heater and a radiator heater that I'm gonna be using as needed, especially at night, to keep the temperature at an even temperature. So remember that when you're pouring, um, depending on where you're pouring, try to maintain the same temperature so that your paints don't um, either thicken up too much or dry at different um, rates which can cause cracking, or in this case, or like this curdling effect. So enough said, guys. I'm gonna mix my paints, I'm gonna prepare the canvas, and we'll see you in a couple of minutes.
Okay guys, here we are, walk through of my pour. Um, these colors are interesting. They're not as bright as the Deco Arts Dazzling Metallics. They seem a lot more muted. Um, so I find that kind of interesting. Um, and the cell structure is a different too. Let me show you over here. So like these in here are interesting and I don't know if they're sinking or what's going on with them. I'm hoping they stay as they are because up through this area here, they look pretty good. So let me tell you what happened. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said that I would hopefully get one pour and if I make a mistake, I will stop the video and I will then um, explain why I'm going to report. Well, what happened was I dropped not one, but two stir sticks in the painting as I was cleaning up, flipped out of the cup. And then I just forgot to stop um, the painting at that point. I did scrape it because I didn't want so much um, color and so much paint on the canvas. So this is what I've got. I do like the edges and the mix of colors. I'm just hoping that center, I may even just go in and clean it up some. We'll just have to see how it dries. Um, at this point, I think the edges, it's pretty much stopped moving. I do like the edge around here. And then a little bit of that gold came in near the end. And these cells have multiple colors in them too. You can see some of them have the red. There you go. I find that kind of fascinating. So it's interesting. I like I like it because it's very peaceful. It's very quiet, serene. Yeah, there we have it, guys. Okay, so fingers crossed this dries well. Then got the temperature in here at a good temperature. It's a bit warmer today outside, so I think things will be good. Okay, we'll catch you soon. Yeah.